You click a button on your phone to ask an artificial intelligence a question, and somehow it just knows the answer instantly. Pretty cool, right? But have you ever wondered where that smart computer brain actually lives? Today, I'll explain why AI data centers use so much water for their cooling, and whether it's fair that big tech companies ask you to save water while they're using massive amounts themselves. Shocker, I know. It's not some tiny robot sitting inside your device, thinking really hard about your questions. What it is, actually, is a giant building full of thousands and thousands of super powerful computers all working together to be really, really smart. When you ask your phone a question, your question travels through invisible signals to one of these giant buildings, where all the super smart computer students work together to figure out the answer. Then, send it back to your phone faster than you can blink. It makes you hot. Just like how when you run around the playground for a long time, you get sweaty and need to cool down. These super smart computers get hot too, but they get much, much hotter than you do when you're running. So, how do we keep thousands of super hot computers from melting into puddles? We need to cool them down, just like how you might jump in a swimming pool on a really hot day. Instead, the people who run these data centers have to get creative about cooling. The most common way to cool these computer buildings is with something called air conditioning, but not the kind that you have in your house. This is industrial strength air conditioning that's powerful enough to keep an entire building full of hot computers comfortable. Well, it comes from machines that work kind of like the refrigerator in your kitchen, but much, much bigger. To make air super cold, these machines need to use something called refrigerant, which is like a special liquid that's really good at stealing heat from things and carrying it away. Now here's where water comes into the picture. That is the sound of it working hard to keep your food cold. So now we have hot computers that need cooling, and the machines that cool the computers also get hot and need cooling. And to cool down the cooling machines, many data centers use water. Lots and lots of water. They use water in big cooling towers that look like giant concrete chimneys. These cooling towers work by taking hot water from the cooling machines and spraying it around inside the tower while big fans blow air through it. When water meets the moving air, some of the water turns into invisible water vapor and floats away, taking all the heat with it. The water that doesn't turn into vapor gets cooler and goes back to help cool the machines again. Some of the water doesn't come back. That water is gone forever. It's like if you had a water bottle with a tiny hole in it. Data centers have to keep adding fresh water to replace the water that evaporated and floated away. But how much water are we talking about here? Well, it's a lot. Like, a really, really lot. Some big data centers use as much water in one day as a small town uses in a whole year. Imagine if every person in your neighborhood just decided to take a shower, wash their dishes, water their garden, and fill up a swimming pool every single day. I mean, that's still less water than some of these computer buildings are just using to stay cool. Google, which runs the smartest assistant that might live in your phone, uses about 4.3 billion gallons of water every single year just for cooling their data centers. That's enough water to fill about 6,500 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Microsoft uses even more, Amazon uses even more than that, and as more people use artificial intelligence for more things, these companies keep building more data centers, which means they need even more water. Now, you might be thinking, but wait, doesn't water just go around in a circle? Doesn't the water that evaporates come back as rain? And you are right to think that. Water does go in a big circle around the Earth. The water that evaporates from data centers does eventually come back as rain somewhere. But here's the tricky part. It doesn't come back in the same place where it was used, and it doesn't come back right away. Think of it like this. If you live out in the desert town where it hardly ever rains, and a big company comes to your town and uses up a lot of your water that your town was saving, that water might come back as rain, but it also might come back in a place that's far away, like a different state or even a different country. Not to mention it might take weeks, months, or even years for it to come back. Meanwhile, your town still needs water for people to drink, to grow food, and to keep plants alive. Now, this is where the fairness question comes in. Many of these big tech companies also run advertisements and campaigns telling regular people to save water. They might tell you to take shorter showers, fix leaky faucets, or not touch your lawn as much. And those are all good ideas. Saving water is important. But some people think it's not very fair for companies to ask regular people to use less water while they use enormous amounts of water for their computer buildings. You might think, hey, maybe you should eat less pizza first, and then we can talk about everyone else eating less. That's how a lot of people feel about big tech companies right now and their water use. But it's not quite that simple. You see, these data centers provide services that millions of people use every day. When you ask your phone for directions, or when your parents use GPS in their car, or when you watch videos online, all of that depends on these big computer buildings. So in some ways, the water is being used to provide services that lots of people want and need. Some companies are trying to find better ways to cool their computers that use less water. Some are building data centers in colder places where they don't need as much cooling. 
If you build your computer building in a place where it's naturally cold outside, like Alaska or northern Canada, you can use the cold outside air temperature to help cool your computers instead of using so much water. Other companies, though, are experimenting with different kinds of cooling. Some are trying to use special liquids that are better at cooling than water are, but don't evaporate as much. Others are building data centers underwater where the ocean water naturally keeps the computers cool. Microsoft actually built a whole data center that looks like a big metal tube and sunk it to the bottom of the ocean. The fish probably think it's pretty weird. There are also companies, though, working on making computers that don't get as hot in the first place. It's like designing running shoes that don't make your feet as sweaty, instead of just giving you bigger towels to wipe off the sweat. If computers could do the same amount of thinking while producing less heat, they wouldn't need as much cooling, which means less water use. Some data centers are also trying to reuse their water more efficiently. Instead of letting water evaporate and disappear, they're finding ways to capture it and use it again. It's like having a really good water bottle that never leaks. They're also trying to use recycled water instead of fresh, clean drinking water for cooling. This means using water that's already been used for other things, like treated wastewater, instead of taking water that people could drink. The location of data centers matters as well. Building a data center in a place where water is scarce, like a desert, is different from building one in a place where there's plenty of water, like near the Great Lakes. It's like the difference between having a water balloon fight in your backyard during a drought versus having one during a rainstorm. The same activity has different impacts depending on the situation. Some cities and states are starting to require companies to report how much water they use and to have plans for reducing their water use over time. It's like how your school might have rules about not wasting food in the cafeteria. These rules help make sure that companies are thinking about the water use and trying to be more responsible. But the big question remains, is it fair to ask regular people to conserve water while big companies use so much? There are good arguments on different sides. Some people say that companies should lead by example and reduce their water use first before asking individuals to change their behavior. Others say that everyone, including both companies and individuals, should do their part to save water at the same time. The truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Big companies should definitely work hard to use less water and find better ways to cool their computers. But regular people can also help by using water wisely in their daily lives. It's not really an either-or situation. It's more like everyone working together to solve a big problem. Think of it like cleaning up after a big party. If one person made most of the mess, they should definitely do most of the cleaning. But if everyone helps a little bit, the whole job gets done faster and easier. The water problem is kind of like that. The companies that use the most water should work the hardest to find solutions, but everyone can help. What's encouraging is that many of these big tech companies are starting to take water conservation seriously. They're investing lots of money in research to find better cooling methods, they're building data centers in places with more water, and they're setting goals to reduce their water use over time. Some companies have promised to be water positive by a certain date, which means that they'll put more water back into local communities than they take out. So, let's recap this whole digital water adventure. AI lives in giant buildings full of super hot computers that need massive amounts of cooling to keep them from melting. Much of that cooling uses water that evaporates and doesn't come back to the same place. This creates tension between companies asking people to save water while using enormous amounts themselves. But both sides are working on solutions, from better cooling technology to smarter data center locations. And now you know why your smartphone assistant is basically a very thirsty digital friend. So go forth and ask it questions, but maybe also take shorter showers just in case.